Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to contribute to the Goldwing Society the things that I've learned and the things that I wanted to know before I did a starter on this beauty. So I don't care if you subscribe to my channel or not, uh, but if you like or not, make a comment so I'll know for the future what I did right, what I did wrong. So just to contribute to the Goldwing Society. And these are the things that I wanted to know before starting to work on this. So here it goes. All right, here is the Goldwing 2015 limited edition uh, 1800. And one day my starter died and basically I couldn't start it anymore. And I decided to do it myself. So I did some investigation and here is the process. So first of all, you will need to remove the seat. Everybody should know how to remove the seat. If not, there are the two of these, one on this side, one on the other side. You remove those, pop the seat, remove the seat. There is a connector underneath. You need to have strong hands to click it. So be ready. Uh, every single connector is not easy to disconnect, but it's doable. So take your time and, uh, and work, it, uh, work it out. The next thing after removing the seat, you will have to check if it's the starter is dead or not. To do that, you will have to, I found on the web that you can actually, well, by the way, you have to remove the panels here on this side and might as well on the other side. But I found on the web that you can actually take the box and twist it just enough, moving it a little bit out because there are two solenoids sitting right there behind this thing and with a lot of with the dexterity in your fingers you can reach them pull them out just before you do that pay very close attention how they are connected there because you don't have much of a space and they go in only one way and there is like a, a prong that you basically put it on and you have to have all your wires connected already so everything is ready to go Pay attention before you remove them, how they connected. They are identical solenoids with a different type of a connectors, uh, color, color of the connectors. So when you push on the start, both of them have to click in order for starter to run. Uh, if only one clicks, uh, that means that the other one is dead or there is some issue. Um, to do that, you basically, of course, you need to make sure that the motorcycle is in neutral, it's standing on the center stand, you know, all the usual stuff. Um, to do that, you basically can touch the relay with your hand while you're clicking it with the starter switch. And if one of them clicks and the other is not, it's not necessarily that the other one is bad. So amazingly, those two connectors are interchangeable. Even though they're different colors, you can actually switch between them. And you can swap those connectors and see if the other one clicks or not. And most likely uh, it will not, but you never know. Uh, suggestion, strongly suggest to re replace both of these solenoids with the OEM because it's a pain in the neck to get them. If you do it once, do it with the right parts so you don't have to do it again if the non-OEM dies on you. Now, when you're gonna be replacing them, you have an opportunity actually to test your starter before even disassembling half of the motorcycle. And to do that, you can connect a small jumper cable to the battery that sits right here and connect directly to the wire, to the cable that goes to the starter that sits right underneath there, buried. And to do that, you can connect, squeeze the small cable, jumper cable, I have that, and basically connect directly. And if the starter is okay, it should spin the engine. If not, well, good luck on that. And you will have to replace your starter. To replace your starter, it's quite, quite a pain in the neck. And my next videos will talk about it just give you, giving you a heads up, you should be able 
part of the disassembly is to remove and service your air filter, which sits right here underneath. So if you can get to your air filter, you're halfway there. Once you get to the air filter, remove my, by the way, just while you're there, treat your filter as well. Suggestion to use KNN because they last longer and uh, you will be able to, you won't have to replace it all the time because getting to the filter, you have to disassemble the whole panel here, remove this side, remove this side, remove this, of course, the seat, disassemble this, lift it up. And on, on the web, there is a lot of uh, suggestions how to do it, remove this and so forth. Uh, the trick is that those tweeters, I was able to disconnect those tweeters but uh, to get to the main connector that's sitting right underneath, it was really hard. I don't know why my fingers wasn't strong enough. I was unable to disconnect it, but I was able to wiggle this thing out and move it out a little bit. So I was able to get to whatever I needed. Once you remove the whole thing, you will have to remove the gas tank. To remove the gas tank, you will have to... Uh, first of all, I strongly suggest to remove first the battery that sits here and the battery box. It's not that difficult. Uh, you can see it and investigate online. And the reason it, to remove the battery box is that you can keep all the screws inside this box and all the clips. I suggest to use a little Ziploc for at least partition your screws per side because there are screws underneath here, and there is additional screws that belong basically to this side, even though they're interchangeable with the other side, but it would be nice if you can keep them separate, and you can mark those little Ziplocs with where you took them off. So one for this side, one for this side, and of course there are additional screws that goes in there that hold the panel, so you keep them on the right side, left side, then you can uh, put, pull out the screws that hold the, uh, frame, uh, the battery box and the frame underneath the gas tank. You will have to disconnect that, uh, remove the bolts, and then uh, the gas tank itself. Uh, you have to remove the hoses that goes in. Extremely strongly recommend you to run it to zero or make sure that the gas level in your tank is very, very low. And the reason is, if you notice, the gas tank is sitting right here, goes all the way to here. That means if the gas tank is full, there's a gas tank, there's a gas here. And if you disconnect the hoses here, all this gas is going to leak out. And I made this mistake. So get yourself a gas can and a hose that you can quickly connect to the hose that you disconnect and drain basically all the gas out. Or you basically run it till it's uh, the light of uh, low gas is on, then you can disconnect it and hopefully it will not leak. Once you do that and remove the uh, frame under the uh, gas tank, you should be able to, with a lots of wigglage, remove the gas tank and see there may be some cables moving around so maybe you'll have to move them around a little bit and uh, from that point on you should see the where the starter is actually sitting and uh, from that from now i will switch to a point where it actually i got there and uh, reminder first of all is that please do not judge me calling for nuts and bolts when I'm referring to the bolts there are almost no nuts at all so when I say nuts that I refer to bolts so just keep it in mind I was so focused on how to put it uh, pull it out that I was uh, confused so forgive me for that so you should be able to do that um, and some additional tips right there and reverse the whole th process back in the bottom line is that it's doable for a normal mortal like me. I have a little technical uh, aptitude, uh, screwing, uh, unscrewing the bolts, and I was able to put the whole thing back together. It's running great. Would I do it again? 
now knowing all this stuff i will and for someone who's really novice get yourself a buddy or someone who can help you out with ideas and stuff it took me uh, the whole process about uh, a week and not constantly working but getting parts and looking at this looking at that the starter itself i got it uh, within a week so if you order a starter start disassembling basically or start doing the tests this is, and then if you decide that it's really a starter went bad, then you can start disassembling. By the time the starter arrives, you can start working and putting it back together. Uh, let me know what you think. I'm going to put the whole thing together on the video, a couple of clips and more stuff. And uh, let me know if I did a good job or not. And again, I don't care if you subscribe or not. I'm just one of the curious that... Uh, if it was uh, good enough. Um, again, let me know and keep your wheels down. And uh, I'll, I'll see the comments. All right. Have a peace. Ride safe. Bye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is my project that I got myself into with my gold wing. GL1800 2015 limited edition. I disassembled it because my starter died. Yeah, whoever wants to get into how to disassemble Goldwing, there's plenty of YouTubers can do that. And I decided to add my little thing because of the pain and suffrage that I am gone through. So I figured out might as well add a little to the community and I haven't picked up a uh, YouTube name stage so that will come later but here is the culprit once I took it out here is my bad starter I took it apart if you notice this is the brush this is the housing by the way if you decide to do it keep the nut from this one for the new starter this is the rotor of the st of the starter if you notice this is what got shorted to the housing so completely dead the whole thing this is what goes on top of the starter these are the three nuts and this is the new starter that I'm gonna be putting in so recycle the nut from here put it there next thing notice there are three screws one of them is longer and this guy is the one that's going to be going through this part and these two holes are going to be accommodated by these two shorter shorter nuts strongly advise to get an extension bars i got mine from harbor freight the one that I'm going to be using is this one and this one once I get the nut. And the reason you want this is to accommodate the nut that's going to be going through here. And the reason is, is because this guy is hidden. You will not be able to see it when you take it off and you will not be able to see it when you put it on. And thus, I recommend to get a boroscope. A boroscope is the camera that flexible camera that you can stick it uh, pretty much anywhere you want. sorry and um, you will be able to see how you put the nut on so strongly advise to get a boroscope for this specific nut for the long one the tools you will need is 12 millimeters and um, that's uh, pretty much it lots of pain and suffrage in terms of patience and uh, wigglage and dexterity if you don't have dexterity in your fingers if you don't have patience if you don't have a reason to get away from people and work on your motorcycle don't do it but i decided to do it for my own safety for my own sake so where it's gonna go it's gonna go into this area right here inside there and 
if you notice i'll put it back there if it's possible to see that's the hole that is gonna go so i looked inside there with the boroscope and um, i noticed that uh, there is uh, the place that accommodates this splinter and then there is a bigger one for this one so i talked to the mechanic and they said that the moment you put it up to the o-ring that means that this guy is already engaged and it's going to be a real pain in the neck to put it in so the story is that i did put this one in i connected power from the battery to this terminal and the ground and the motor spun but what uh, i read on the internet that when you put it in it not to tighten it with the two screws that gonna go through these two things and i did that and as i was doing it it heard like a clack and then it went inside so i got really scared and uh, because the internet people saying that it is a chance that i broke something inside the aid inside the engine i took it out again i stuck my boroscope at the hole and i didn't see anything wrong so that's why i went back to the mechanic and i asked him so what's up with that he said no nah, don't worry it's probably the o-ring and that's why they gave me this thing to try i don't know what it is it is some kind of a ah there you go pivot works i never tried it but they said to put this on the o-ring and expect that it will never go easily inside and once it's been inside the engine and aligned i have not rotated this splinter this uh, uh splinter there so it should be aligned and i should be able to put it back in so wish me good luck and i'll get back to you once i put it in and it is possible to get it in by wiggling between this cable and um, into that hole let's see if i can turn on the light the flashlight and get back to you all right be right back okay here's with the flashlight so you can see the place where the center is plugs in and the uh, sprockets and the uh, gears that will engage the starter as I said I have not seen anything broken the engine was spinning fine and uh, it looks okay to me sounded okay so I think I did not break anything so I'm gonna be trying to put it back in a tightening tightening it so another reason why you do want to have a um, boroscope is that when you're gonna be unscrewing the nuts so let me pick up a, an extension as a pointer so when you're gonna be in unscrewing this is the nut that you will have to unscrew right here right next to it there is unfortunately this nut which is exactly the same size so if you don't have a boroscope it's very 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 high chance that you will hit this guy and you will unscrew it without noticing and the starter is still going to be stuck in so then you'll have to twiggle 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 until you finally get this screw that goes in here to unscrew it so highly highly recommend to get a boroscope now when you're going to be removing your uh, starter once you hit the one at the bottom uh, the unscrew it completely and unscrew the uh, the top ones which is this guy and where is it and that one there at the back which is much easier to see from here this guy you will have to unscrew this guy here and that's why <laughs> I use the wrench this guy it's or, or even this guy so once you unscrew them you wiggle wiggle a little bit you get a little crack and then you can stick a screwdriver in a crack something like this 
and just stick it in between stick it right here and just give it a little twist just a little bit then you go at the back you give it a little twist there and come back back and forth back and forth until you finally get it out and then you wiggle it out of this thing so I'll get back to you once I'm done wish me good luck well I am back wanted to give you a result and I'm extremely excited well as I uh, mechanically can be but I just slide it in here it is sitting inside nice and dandy no screws yet but it is inside so here's my conclusion it was before taking me a long time to stick it in it was real real major pain in the neck to slide it in and the culprit of this sliding in was this o-ring this o-ring is very very hard to slide in highly extremely highly recommend to get this thing I highly recommend the reason is you put it on the o-ring put it on the o-ring not too much but decent amount and once you get it positioned it just slides in with the hand nice and kind of little push but way way easier than doing it without the greasing of the o-ring and this is the one that i highly recommend now i was told it should not damage this thing anything inside the engine uh, i have to trust them but this is it and um, as i said this is the main problem is this o-ring now i saw on the youtube they say before you put the whole stunt starter in to remove this o-ring stick it inside make sure all the gears are aligned then you take it out put back the back the o-ring you grease it up and then wiggling into place and the whole starter should go inside and by the way i want to also to mention interesting observation that my starter fried but the brushes are still big still good See? The brushes are still good. So it was a mechanical failure. It was a mechanical failure on this damn thing. Yep. And this is the O-ring. What a pain in the neck. If I just had this thing, and again, I'm not promoting anything. Uh, it's my personal experience. You put it in, and it slides right back in. So the key is greasing. All right, I'll come back later. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm ready to go in, to screw in. Again, I'm gonna use the old dead starter to show what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to put, let me realign this. Okay, I'm gonna try to put this screw into this hole on the starter see there's the start the old starter underneath from this side while it's hidden and to do that i'm going to use my brand new boroscope that i just got and i'm gonna stick it under here so i can see where i'm going and put that screw now the trick here and i'm sharing this the trick you can do whatever you want first of all this is the socket it's good idea to have an extension with a lock that the socket is not going to fall off because remember you are under the starter and if you're under the starter and this thing fall off you have to take the starter out to get it out then you ask yourself so well, how do you keep the screw attached to this as you noticed i put a piece of napkin uh, paper towel 
stuck this thing so it's kind of wedged pretty good inside and once it's screwed in I can just pull on this thing the napkin will fall off and then I just basically finish it I'll just finish the tying up and I pull off it there's just a little piece of paper that will fly away with the wind so this is the trick you put a piece of napkin you wedge this thing in and it's pretty strongly sits inside and once you screw it in you just pull it out and the napkin will fall off good idea to have the lock on the socket so the socket will stay with the extension remember if the socket falls off you'll have to take out the starter but now with the grease it should be much easier but nevertheless it's pain in the neck all right wish me good luck i'm going in And finally, ladies and gentlemen, install this damn thing. And I connected plus to this post, minus to this, used my battery and then a jump start cable. And it spun the engine pretty well, actually very well. And looks like now is reverting the whole process of putting this damn thing back to life um, I will make some additional comments at the end you don't need to see how I'm struggling putting it back because there's a lot of youtubers that do that so final comments to come late later okay see you then and final notes on the whole thing closure of the video here it is i'm gonna start it the lights is on and trying to pair the starter working like a charm use your head and i may have pointed something wrong on the bolts putting the starter together but use your head, try to be logical and see how the whole thing comes together. It's doable, patience and perseverity. And you can do it if you want to. All right. Have a good one. Give me a shout. Let me know how I did it. Never. It was the first cut. Never uh, did double takes. Never edited it. It's a raw material. So... Be gentle. <laughs> All right. See you on the road. Bye.